pick up on my station. I do not like them in my nation. It's more Mike Malloy. It is indeed 10 before the hour. And this hour has been sponsored by Diane in Kansas. All right, we had asked Mark Taylor Canfield to call in another night when he called in uh, a couple of nights ago, and here he is. Hi, Mark. Hey, Mike. Yeah, I just I wanted to talk to you about something that came up. Um, do you remember when I was talking to you live from the May Day demonstrations here in Seattle? Yes, I do. Right. So I guess part of the fallout that we're experiencing now is that there is a grand jury investigation and unfortunately, um, of specifically activists in Portland, Olympia, and Seattle, they, there have um, been activists in each city that's been subpoenaed. Uh, the grand jury convened on August 2nd in Seattle, and it's scheduled for its second session on uh, September 13th. But the problem, Mike, is that... Um, well, wait a minute. Is this a federal grand jury? Yes, it is a federal grand jury. In and in uh, Investigating Occupy. Well, they're not specifically saying, of course, um, all of the court documents are sealed, all of the search warrants are sealed, all of the, the evidence is um, been sealed by the U.S. Attorney. It's a secret grand jury, so there's no way for any of us to know really what they're investigating. But there was, uh, according to the Portland Mercury, there was a warrant that was left behind at a house there that was raided. And the, the problem is, is that the, the police and the FBI in Seattle, it's the Seattle Police Department and their SWAT team, but in Portland, it was the FBI. I mean, they literally came in in khaki paramilitary gear with assault rifles. They used stun grenades to go into these people's homes, raided their homes, arrested no one, but confiscated, quote, political material. Specifically, what, apparently... What, uh, uh, help me here. What was the basis of the raid, Mark? Well, that's the problem, Mike, is that except for this one warrant that was left behind, which specifically mentioned... Um, anarchist material, mm -hmm. um, specifically uh, literature. Um, that's the only indication that we have. One of the people that was raided in Portland said that uh, his laptop was confiscated, a cell phone, two thumb drives. But the issue here, Mike, is that they're having they're they're issuing these search warrants and they're raiding people very with these violent paramilitary police actions. Meanwhile, they're not evidently finding anything to convict anyone on. Mm -hmm. So the National Lawyers Guild and other civil rights groups are really up in arms about it, saying, you know, hey, if there's criminal activity that you're investigating, then, you know, you should arrest those people. But this idea of, you know, using paramilitary police, which are evidently all part of the Joint Terrorism Task Force, which is a, a group that the FBI helps set up with local law enforcement agencies. But apparently, you know, they're using this, according to the National Lawyers Guild, actually as a way of cracking down on the movement. And given the, uh, you know, regardless of what people think of the tactics that were used on May Day, which I certainly don't agree with, the fact that they're using violence, you know, to raid peaceful people and then finding no weapons, no criminal activity at all, it smacks, once again, of political repression. And it, given, you know, the background of the U.N. envoys writing to Secretary of State Hillary Clinton criticizing the crackdowns on the Occupy movement, it just looks, once again, like in the United States there is, uh, the use of violent oppression on a political movement. And this has been happening for years. Cindy Sheehan has been raving about mm -hmm. this. You know, one of her friends got raided um, right after she visited that person's home. And so she's been really upset about the well, grand jury see, indictments. Of, and see, this is, the, this is another reason. I have to break here, Mark, but if you hold on, uh, sure. I'll, I'll come back to you. This is another reason uh, that continuing to vote uh, Democratic on the national level, ah, what the hell, continue to vote for Obama is very, very difficult for some people. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and considering another vote for a government that is attacking Occupy? For what? The Norman Goldman Show, live weekday afternoons on your drive home. Randy Road, weeknights. From 6 to 9 on Seattle's Progressive Talk, AM 1090. Talking with the Mark Taylor Canfield. Um, so the, 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 the basis of these raids has been so far uh, an unserved warrant looking for uh, radical printed material. 
Well, they they specifically have mentioned the word anarchist, but if you look at it from a uh, unbiased point of view, you would say that it's political literature, right. and that's why the National Lawyers Guild is so upset. Because when you have police violently raiding people's private homes in order to confiscate political material, that is First Amendment protected. Uh, that's a First Amendment protected right. Freedom of speech. It's also um, the right to privacy in your own home, which is one of the issues you know that our mm -hmm. that Colin has had with Great Britain. Well, it, it's, know, all, it's also breaking into their home. It's also an indication that the government no longer fears the people. That uh, the government, I don't care who is president at the time, it can be a Bush or an Obama, it can be a Kennedy or an Eisenhower. It means that the government has made that transition from respecting the rights of political t dissent to purely and simply suppressing them. And, and once you get to that point, then I'm, I hope I'm wrong, but these sorts of activities by the government can't be settled through the courts. So the way that works is that they can't really throw you in prison, but they can hold you supposedly in detention, you know, they can put you away for a while during the grand jury to try to uh, coerce uh, you. Into right, as, as I believe the term is as a material witness. Right. Um, so far they had to postpone the second um, grand jury, and I think that might be partly because no one was cooperating. Mm -hmm. Now, I've had a situation like this before when Lieutenant Aaron Watada refused to serve in Iraq. Mm -hmm. and right. You know, he was willing to serve in Afghanistan, but he refused to board the plane to go to Iraq. So they put him on trial, gave him a court-martial trial. And in the process of that, some of the reporters like myself who had had interviews with him after his um, his detention, or actually after his charges, uh, were subpoenaed, you know. And what happened in that case is that all of the reporters that were subpoenaed just refused um, to testify in that. Partly, you know, part of the journalistic code of ethics, the Society of Professional Journalism, you know, is telling us, you know, that we need to protect our sources. Right. So it was, what it would have been was they would have been fishing for quotes from Lieutenant Watada to the reporters, which would indict him on, on charges of behavior and becoming an officer because mm -hmm. of his criticism of the Bush administration. But in those cases, everyone refused to testify. So basically, and in that case, it was the Pentagon dropped their subpoenas. So in this case, it may happen, too, if they don't um, find any evidence. But what's concerning to me is that if you have people whose homes are being raided and they're not being arrested, there's a question there. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a big question. There. Well, it's, it's, also, it's also a very effective a tactic of intimidation. Exactly. And that's what the U.N. envoys, um, the envoy for peaceable assembly and the envoy for freedom of expression was saying to the State Department is that, and the National Lawyer Guild, is, Lawyers Guild, Neil Fox, is also saying this, that it does cast a, a, a pall on the movement. It frightens people, and they become worried about their safety. Now, we already know that there are no mass demonstrations happening. I saw, you know, nothing really that massive at the RNC or the Democratic National Convention. And so it puts people into this fear mode of, well, I don't want to go to the demonstration well, because that, I don't want to be harassed. There's another way to look at that uh, as a tactic. And if, if, in fact, it was a tactic by uh, whatever organizational structure there is in Occupy or, or in these demonstrations, then I think it was a great tactic. And the tactic was simply let them bring out their tanks and their sound machines and their batons and their electricity and their guns and bullets, and nobody will show up. It's that old saw from, uh, from Vietnam, you know, what if they gave a war and nobody showed up? So if uh, I would like to think, uh, and, and I, I, I guess because um, of the old tactician that still lives inside of me, but I would like to think that that was a perfect tactic. Um, uh, make noises that you may show up and demonstrate uh, uh, until your nose bleeds at these conventions and then don't show up and let the fools uh, stand there with their weaponry. Uh, I, I do not understand the idea of demonstrating at a political convention anyway. It's an exercise in utter and absolute futility. Um, sure, there's a lot of media at these things, but the media is trained inside. The only time the media will come out and take pictures is if you start to smash something. And if you start to smash something, then the whole thing starts to get discredited. So, you know, if, if someone were to ask me about political conventions... Uh, 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 since Chicago 68, I would just say, what's the point? Uh, there are much more effective ways to make public uh, demonstrations work rather than show up at these half-witted, 
phony, totally scripted conventions. Hey, Mark, that's uh, that's my signal to get out of here. Um, uh, check in with us next week, will you please? Yeah, we'll keep occupying the media, Mike. Don't worry. Stick in there. We're with you. All right. Take care. Take care. Mark Taylor Canfield can get in touch with him if you, uh, no matter where you are, but if you're in Seattle, might be a good idea. Uh, we'll be back after the break. Stay with us. I'm Mike Malloy.